Should we use NGRX? Well, depending on the size of your application, you might not want to use NGRX. Like for example, this example, we have one service or we might have just a couple services and we might have a few components. NGRX might be overkill. NGRX really helps you with managing multiple states. So if you have a user state and a product state and you only have a few components, then you definitely don't want to use NGRX. But as your application begins to grow, you start dealing with several services. You have multiple states dealing with like a hundred different components. Then it could become a nightmare managing all these different states. And that's where NGRX really comes in at. So in this next example here, this is a real accurate description of NGRX. This is what we're going to be trying to do throughout the course though, throughout our application. We're going to have this central source of truth. Everybody relies on this central source of truth. So if you update a user, all the components are going to know that that update to the user happened and they will automatically update. If any services do any work, they grab anything from the back end, they will automatically update the store and let the store know that we got some updated information. Now again, this ain't an accurate way of describing how to use NGRX. So this is more of an accurate description of using NGRX. So we get these actions. These actions are like middlemen that deal with our store for us. So if we dispatch a action, it will go and update our central source of truth, our store, with any information. So NGRX gives us all these different pieces for dealing with our central source of truth, our store, our state. And this is going to really help us to clean up our code. So let's jump into the code real quick and I'll show you a real quick example. So here we have a typical Angular component. We're not using NGRX with this component. So if we take a closer look at this component here, we got our constructor, nothing new here. We're bringing in a bunch of services and that's pretty common bringing in a bunch of services into a component. And then we're doing a bunch of work within the ng on it, setting some things up. And then we got this delete product method. This is for deleting a individual product. And as you notice here, we're doing a whole bunch of work here. We're turning the spinner on. We're giving the user alert messages, depending if they're successful at deleting the product or not. We're rerouting the user. So a bunch of typical things you might do within a component. But using NGRX, we're going to really clean this up. And what we'll do is we'll have side effects where NGRX will be handling our spinner, our alert messages, we'll be setting all that up, our rerouting the user. We won't need to do all this stuff within the component anymore. So let's look at this same file after we implement NGRX. So I'm going to jump over to the master branch. So now we're looking at the same file using NGRX. And you'll notice a difference right away within the constructor. Now we're not pulling in all these services anymore. We're just pulling in two. One of them being our central source of truth, our store. And you'll notice throughout all of our components, NGRX is going to really clean up our constructor because we're not going to need to bring in so many services anymore. Then we're doing a little bit more work within our ng on in it for setup. Then if we look at the delete product method now, you'll notice we got rid of all of that code and we're just doing this. All we're doing now is we're dispatching one action and we're passing in the ID. And all of our side effects are being handled by NGRX. And what's nice about this is it really cleans up our component. So should you use NGRX? Definitely if you're dealing with medium to large size applications, I definitely would. So in module three, let's begin setting up NGRX within our project.